spending your Sundays with comic strips. Here's your look at the Boss Fight Studio Sunday Morning Comics Series 1 Collectible Figurines. What's black, white, and red all over? I mean, right now is realizing I, I didn't realize there was going to be a riddle at the beginning of this video. The answer to that, quickly, is a newspaper. And every Sunday morning, I would be looking at the newspaper, not necessarily to see the news, but instead going right directly to the comics. And that would be always my morning routine before I went off to church. If you guys certainly did follow along the old antics of some of these characters from the comics, a new lineup is available to us from the folks over at Boss Fight Studio. I would like, by the way, to thank the folks over at Boss White Studio that did provide this sample, this boxing, that we could unbox in this video. You can see that, or you may or may not be able to see, that there's six on the top, there's six on the bottom. So in this unboxing video, we're going to be unboxing the entire case of 12 individual boxes, boxlets. Having a look at each of the individual boxes right now, you can see on the front, Sunday Morning Comics. Uh, I see Hagar the Horrible, Beetle Bailey. Now, these are some of the comics I wouldn't have grown up reading. I remember Dennis the Menace, Beetle Bailey. Uh, some of the ones oh, certainly on the back, the back. Dennis the Menace. There's Curtis, Beetle Bailey, Hagar the Horrible, Sarge, Lucky Eddie, Grimy, and Billy. Or I think it's Grimmy and Billy. You can collect them all. For me, at least, when I was growing up and reading comics and newspapers, it was usually Garfield. It was Bloom County. And I think it was also Marmaduke. Those were the ones. Oh, and Ziggy were always the ones I always went to. Uh, what are some of your favorite comics? Let me know down below in the comments section. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and open up and have a look at each one of these. Uh, these should be also available already now if you guys are interested. You can also download the Boss Fight Studio app by scanning the available QR code on the side of the box here. I'm going to reach off to the side and grab myself a knife. I'm going to use Chet Cunnington the third for this. And we're going to slice the tape delicately on each of the boxes to not only preserve the contents, but also to make sure I don't cut myself in the process. Pulling out the first one... Uh, first one we have is Curtis, Curtis, and we're going to just unbag this, at least get him out so he can actually breathe. Yeah, I think my first immediate comic so happened, I think also to be on the first page as well was Garfield. Garfield was always my go-to when it came to comics, Sunday morning comics. But what, what, what again is yours? Let me know down below in this, in the comment section. But here we have Curtis, very nicely painted. As you can see, he's... I don't know if he's jumping for joy. It looks like he's got him, his, himself a hat that looks like a cob of corn. Very nicely painted head sculpt. Equally well-painted body there as well. The lightning bolts on the sides of his shoes. And again, he's attached to a display stand. The bottom of the display stand, by, this, by the way, says 2021 King Features Syndicate, Inc. And also licensed by Boss Fight Studio, LLC. I would suspect. I don't think they actually tell you how many. No, it doesn't. There's eight but it doesn't tell you how many of each one is in this set or how many of them would be in each case. We're going to go ahead and open up the next box. Again, careful, careful, careful. We don't want to be cutting and causing any blood leakage on this guy's part. I would put a bit of a damper, I would imagine, in this video. Uh, the next one we have is Hagar. Now, I, I recognize Hagar. Hagar was one of the ones I would read. Uh, BC was also one that I would read. Now, this one actually looks like it's, yeah, it's two parts, and he came in a slightly different baggie as well. Put that to the side. So some assembly was required for Hagar here. We're going to go ahead and just attach Hagar here. I would imagine there was probably a correct way. It is the correct way, that way right there. And he also has himself a display stand, which in this case, actually, he is separate from. So you can remove it if you really want to. He has his shield with several arrows already lunged into the side of it. And of course, he's got himself his sword as well. Really nice looking Hagar. Two different ways that I would read myself the comics. It was the Monday to Friday strip that would be in the black and white format. And then I would, of course, get always more excited for the color treatment comics that would be in the Sunday newspaper. Here in Canada, it was the Sunday Sun. That was our newspaper. That was the, that was the newspaper I would always read. Uh, we have ourselves another Curtis. I suppose I don't have to necessarily take him out of his, his little baggie there. But you can see, yeah, it is identical. No different between the two. I would imagine they probably would have had to get the license for obvious reasons to be able to release these figures. I wonder if they would ever get be able to get the license for like the likes of Garfield. Garfield probably would be a harder license, I think, to probably acquire. I'm just trying to think of other ones I would have... It's another comic strip that I would have read when I was a kid. It was basically like... It was Family Matters. I think Family Matters was more in the U.S. strips. They may have 
also been in some Canadian newspapers. Here's Beetle Bailey, by the way. And again, we'll just cut the bag here. Let the man breathe, after all. <laughs> Always good to get them out of their baggies. There's Beetle Bailey. I feel like I would have read Beetle Bailey, but not probably extensively. I wasn't as loyal to Beetle Bailey as maybe, say, the likes of the other characters. I was always like those single panels as well. As well. Like Ziggy. I think Ziggy was always a single frame comic. I do even like the fact that they added the little tiny freckles on the side of his face. You can't see his eyes, so I would imagine he's probably going to be running into a lot of walls. But I like that they've also put him in a running pose. Really nice looking figure. Go ahead and grab the next unbox. Uh, grab the next box to unbox. And being the fact that this is also Series 1, I would imagine that means that they've got some plans to probably release a Series 2. I can only imagine the kind of characters we may get in Series 2. Bloom County, though, was certainly right up there for me. And I think they also changed the name of Bloom County to something else. And by then, I sort of lost the interest in it. I'm just seeing... How does this... Oh, I see. I wasn't doing this the right way. There's Sarge, and it looks like he's kicking possibly Beetle Bailey. That would be a nice display of having the two on your shelf like this. And again, like the paint on these are so good for the sizing of these. A little ranking there on the side, done nicely in yellow. Even the little tiny snaps on the fronts of his button buttons, his button front pockets are all nicely done in, in the uh, yellow there as well. A little bit of yellow there on the bottom of his behind. I just dropped myself the display stand. Where is it? Where is it? Somewhere, somewhere down there. We're going to just have to put the sard down here for a second. Let's free up a little bit of space also on this side. And finishing off at least the top row, grabbing again, cutting the knife, using the knife to cut the tape. And we've got ourselves again a different character. Now in this case, we've got Lucky Eddie, who once again is in these larger Ziploc bags. So far, I think Curtis was the only one that wasn't in one of these Ziploc bags. Now again, some mild assembly. It kind of actually looks like a happy slash very scary looking clown. <laughs> I don't know. That's a horrible impression of a scary clown. Uh, we'll just plug it in place. And there we go. I have Lucky Eddie with shield on one side, sword in the other hand there. Uh, this one does have a seam line. Obviously, you can see kind of right, right, right in the middle of the nose, all the way down the side of the face, or in the front of the face, and all the way down the neck as well. Other than that, though, this this one looks really good as well. Put that over there with Hagar. And then on to the second row, quickly just doing a, a check off of where we've left off. We've got Curtis. We already got Curtis, a Beetle Bailey, Hagar, Sarge, Lucky Eddie. We still have to get Billy, who I think is from Family Matters. Family. Is it Family Matters? I don't know. And then we've got uh, Grimmy. And then, of course, Dennis the Mouse. Dennis the Mouse. I actually i am looking forward to getting that one right there. It wasn't Family Matters. What was it? It was Family Family Circus? Was it Family Circus? Somebody please, please let me know down below in the comment section. And here we have Grimmy. I would certainly hope it's Grimmy and not Grimy. That's not probably a great name to be calling a character. I would imagine it's probably Grimmy. I like this one a lot. This actually, you know what? Might be my favorite up there with Hagar the Horrible. The big smile on his face. A little bit of additional black that they painted on the bottom of his schnoz. Really nice looking figure. Now this one doesn't look like it detaches from its display stand, which in, in my case is actually good because I've already dropped the poor display stand down below in Sarge. And Sarge now right now has to be kind of laying down on the job over here. Uh, grabbing the next box. Uh, I also maybe didn't even mention this either, but you can see like just how good. I, I really like the detailing and the, and the art styling that they've used for the boxes here. Uh, on the side, it also says Boss Fight Studio is Andrew Franks, Fred As is Axon, Katrina Cerise Arana, Eric Arana, Eric Ridlin, Tony Tellerigo, uh, Dave Reeves, and Kate McLeod. I guess all the people responsible for some of the things we've certainly had a look at here on this channel. Cutting. Oh, this one. I already did cut the tape on this. I got ahead of myself already looking at the side of the box here. And we've got ourselves another Grimmy. I'm going to keep him in the bag for the time being. We now have four boxes left to go. Let me know again down below in the comments. Ah, there we go. There's Billy. I think it's Family Circus. I'm I'm willing to put my press the butter buzzer 
and lock in my votes. I think it's Family Circus. Please let me know down below in the comment section. And as I'm opening up, by the way, Billy, quickly looking at this, I think the only one we don't have yet is Dennis the Menace, which I would imagine he's probably somewhere in there. And we're going to be doing a tally on these, by the way. As it stands right now, we've got ourselves two Grimmy. Uh, we've gotten ourselves two Curtis. And I think that's the only, that is the only, those are the only two that we've gotten ourselves duplicates of. And there we have Billy. Whenever I hear Billy, I always think of Silent Night, Deadly Night. We're not necessarily going to be thinking Silent Night, Deadly Night when we're thinking about these characters. More wholesome family learning here. Billy, as you can see, is running in a running pose. Some nice paint work done on his sneakers, complete with laces. It was a little hard to see his laces because he's got the longer pants. When I was a kid, I was had really long pants. Too long of a pant. I think I was difficult in size. My legs, I think, were always... They were either too short for the size of what my waist was, or it was the other way around. But I always found like I, I had really well-fitted pants around my waist and really long legs. I always had to roll up the cuffs, and they were always dragging behind me. That's a story that I didn't even necessarily <laughs> need to add in this video. Just adding it anyways. There's Billy. So, of course, what we have left to still find is uh, Dennis the Menace, which I would imagine is going to be somewhere in the next three boxes that we're going to be opening up. And then, speak of the devil, Mr. Wilson, I probably would probably agree with me. There's Dennis the Menace himself, once again, in a Ziploc bag. We're going to go ahead and just pull him out of the bag right now. Um, I would imagine he does have, there it is right there, his slingshot. It's almost like he's saying goodbye to his parents, driving away. Oh, don't worry, I'll be good, I'll be good. And then meanwhile, he's got his slingshot behind his back. He does have, again, you got to install him onto the display stand. Do I have it going the right way? I do have it going the right way. There we go. I would say it would be nice if we could get ourselves a Mr. Wilson, but do we really need a Mr. Wilson? At least we've got ourselves Dennis the Menace. And again, like the paint on this is really good, and you can see the eyebrows. I don't even know how that's possible, that eyebrows, you can see them through the hair. Either the hair is really thin or the eyebrows are just sort of levitating. That's one of the designs that they went with. Again, a little tuft on the back. Dennis the Menace always kind of reminded me of Barney Rubble from the Flintstones. Why would I come up with a, a comparing of those two characters? I don't know. I don't know. But there's freckles again on his face. Nice striped shirt. And of course, you got the red, the red overalls. There was also a, a, a Dennis the Menace in Britain. Uh, there was a British Dennis the Menace who actually had black hair. So sometimes when you're describing Dennis the Menace with blonde hair, people sort of like look at you and like, I don't, I don't think that's Dennis the Menace. Well, there was two. I think there was two Dennis the Menace. I think I actually did have a Dennis the Menace where he had the black hair, the black curly hair. Did you? Let me know down below in the comment section. And we got two more boxes left to go. We've already checked off. I mean, we've got to already have all the eight figures on the back. But let's see who we have. Sort of will give you a good idea of what kind of ratio of characters we're going to have when you get the entire case for yourself. We got ourselves another Dennis the Menace. We keep him in the bag. And then one last box to go in what seems to be a long video, but actually not too bad. Too bad. We're just passing the 13 minute mark. The last box in the new unboxing of the Sunday morning comic series one figurines, we've got ourselves another Billy. So if I'm looking at this correctly, based on all the characters we already opened up and all the boxes we already opened up, I think the only figures that we were getting onesies of, quickly looking at it on the back of the box here, yeah, we only got one Lucky Eddie. We only got one Hagar the Horrible, which I would say that that would be one of the figures that you would definitely want to pick up. Uh, we only got one Beetle Bailey, and we only got one Sarge. So the ones that we did get duplicates of was Dennis the Menace, Curtis, uh, Grimmy, and Billy. 2-2, two, 2-2, two, 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 and then, you know, the other ones were all singles. Uh, as for my favorite figures in the unboxing that we already had a look at of all these figures, I think with number one, I would say, is Hagar the Horrible. May have something to do with the fact I actually did read the Hagar the Horrible comics growing up as a kid. Uh, not as big of a fan as, say, Garfield or Ziggy. Ziggy would be awesome to do a, a Ziggy in Series 2. Hagar would be number one for me. Uh, Grimmy would be number two. I really like to look at that one. And uh, you know what? For number three, I might actually say Dennis the Menace. I like to look at Dennis the Menace. What are your favorite three figures in this unboxing of Sunday Morning Comic Series 1 figurines from the folks over again at Boss Fight Studio? Let me know down below in the comment section. And again, speaking of Boss Fight Studio, a big thank you, big thank you to the folks over at Boss Fight Studio that did actually provide the sample of uh, this case where we could actually unbox these in this video. A big thank you to them. Uh, today, we were having a look at the Sunday Morning Comics Series 1 collectible figurines.
If you did ever read a comic strip, whether it be the black and white, or like myself, we're spoiled with the colored comics in the Sunday, Sunday Sun here in Canada, Sunday Sun. Let me know down below in the comment section what some of your favorite comic strips were growing up. Let me know. If you guys also, by the way, are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, make sure you're hitting the subscribe button down below, that you're as well turning on the bell notification, and you're also as well coming back here on a regular basis. While we may have, yes, finished up and unboxed everything here for the Sunday Morning Comics Series 1 figurines, there's definitely going to be a lot more unboxings coming your way in the not-so-distant future. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.